Hey, what's up, people? Hardleg Joe here with the profile for Megalith Stun Max, my take on one of Yu Gi Oh's strangest and most underrated ritual archetypes. Starting off with our monster lineup, we have one Talismandra, three Manju, a single candle, triple feathers as a thought but blue, a pair of hard legs, monster ritual spells, plus a demon named Beth who nukes the board to hell. Triple anti impermanence, three cups of slime, three angels, two demons, and the pair combined. Full's the best monster, so I save it for last. Being foolish and preparing helps you search it fast. Soup. Just one. Megalith unformed summons from the deck. Their field spell and their trap are the final tech. As for the extra deck, it's got one tss, a Pegasus, three Heralds, one Ding, Big Scarf, Rock Searcher, BOOM! No grave for you. That one link that becomes really big and powerful when you make it with ritual monsters? You know the one. Also, the three most popular nightmares and the misses. The side deck I'll go over in a bit. So, Megaliths, the all-ritual archetype that says ritual spells are for dorks. It's an archetype made of high defense monsters that can nuke the board and attack with a very, very big number. In a lot of ways, they're actually a lot like super heavy samurais, except that megaliths actually require some intelligence to play them, which unfortunately disqualifies about half of you. For the other half, there's two main cards you want to know about this deck, Beth and Leg. When Beth is summoned, you can target cards your opponent controls up to the number of rituals in your grave with different names and destroy them. Because of how this deck works, you'll usually have at least three rituals in your grave, probably more, which means this thing can easily wipe your opponent's entire field. Once you do that, you want to summon Phaleg. This is the highest attack megalith with 2500, but more importantly, it gives every monster you control 300 attack and defense for every ritual in your graveyard. Again, the graveyard fills up pretty damn quickly, meaning this can easily get everything you control over 3,000 attack and just push for game. You can do other stuff, of course. This thing can negate targeting effects, so can Surveyus. You got a toolbox of Ixies and Links, and don't get me started on Chaos Max. We'll get to him. Don't you worry. But most of the time, you're just going for these two. Summon Beth, blow up the field, summon Leg, attack for game. That's the plan, and it's very simple. Where things get complicated is how you actually accomplish this plan. Okay, so there's essentially three classes of Megalith. The level 8 monsters, the level 4 monsters, and the lone level 2. All the level 8 monsters act like ritual spells in your hand. You can discard them to ritual summon a Megalith from your hand by tributing monsters with the same level or higher. You don't usually want to do this because you're getting rid of two cards just to summon one, but sometimes you have to. That's why I'm fine with playing three each of these high-level monsters. They can be kind of bricky, but they can also be your play starters in a pinch. Next are the level four monsters. These all have effects on the field that say once per turn, you can summon any ritual monster from your hand, not just a megalith, by tributing monsters with equal or higher levels, including this card. These can make a lot of neat plays, but the main thing to keep in mind is if you have a level 4 on the field, you can tribute it to summon another level 4 lower from the hand. This is useful because the level 4s help you dig when they're summoned. The twins let you draw one and discard one, Angel searches a megalith monster, and Demon searches a megalith spell trap. That's why we have these ratios. The twins aren't really all that useful on their own, but if you have the Angel, you can summon it, search the demon, and then immediately summon it with Angel's effect to search your field spell. The field spell says once per turn, if a megalith is summoned, you can add a ritual monster from your graveyard to your hand. This is really good for maintaining advantage in this deck, and something you want to search out first turn whenever possible. If you have this along with the twins, you can use the demon to summon them, which will trigger the field spell, allowing you to add back either the angel or the demon. Then you can summon whatever you added with the twins for another search, since the search effects on these are not hard once per turns. Alternatively, if you don't already control full, you might want to use your level 4 to summon this, because it is the best megalith and our main playmaker. First of all, when it's summoned, you get to add a ritual from your grave to your hand, and full becomes its level. Not only does this mean the summon is effectively free because you gain back whatever you tributed for it, but the level modulation allows you to go into rank 4s and even rank 8s with the greatest of ease. 
But that's not even the best part. This thing lets you ritual summon a megalith from the fucking deck by tributing levels from your hand or field, which is already kind of cool, and then you find out that it's actually a quick effect that can be used during either player's main phase. End your turn with full on board and any of your level 8s in hand, and in any moment you can launch Beth out of the deck like a giant demonic rocket and blow apart your opponent's board mid-combo. It's pretty neat. Oh, and since you'll likely have the field spell when you do this, you could just add back whatever level 8 you tributed, meaning you'll have everything you need to summon Leg Out on the subsequent turn and OTK your opponent's face off. And that's like the most basic setup you have, something you can do consistently with two, three cards. If you manage to get more, say you summon the Demon Boy twice on your first turn, you might also have this continuous trap for your opponent to contend with. This thing is essentially a continuous back to the front for Megaliths. Every turn, you can special summon a Megalith from your grave in defense position, and if it leaves the field, you shuffle it back into the deck. That last part is supposed to be a negative, because you kind of want rituals in your graveyard, but it works amazingly with full, because it means you can recycle any of your monsters. In fact, if you wanted to, you could easily get away with playing just two Beths, or, or even one. I like three, because everyone is playing Called by the Damn Grave and DD Crow, so it's good to have backups, but with this, you don't really need them. But I digress, the trap is good for more than just recycling. While it won't trigger Beth or your level 4 since their effects activate when you ritual summon them, all the other effects are left intact, making this excellent kaiju insurance. If someone tributes over your foal with a Gamma Sill, you just flip Emergence, summon this back, and proceed to use that kaiju as tribute fodder to summon Beth. You can also use this to summon Leg in the battle phase, which might just put a damper on your opponent's attack-based plans, or bring back this one if you want some protection from targeting. Speaking of which, Surveyus, pretty great tech card in this deck. You can discard it to negate an effect that would target. Pretty nice for making sure your Manju or your Incantations don't get hit by infinite impermanence. You can also actually summon it in this deck, which is neat, but it's mostly there to protect your searchers. Speaking of which, we have a pretty small Incantation engine, mostly feathers since they require you to reveal a ritual monster, which we have a lot of. Using this or Chalice Slime, you can search your one of Candol, who will search your one of Soup. This will let you ritual summon any monster using incantations, which is a great way to get your plays started. With Candle, you'll have enough for Angel or Full, either of which can search the other. All you need to get off your first turn Beth Interruption combos is two cards, either a Feather, Tally, or Slime, so you can get your ritual spell, along with Angel or Full. This can be accomplished very easily, even if your opponent has disruption, thanks to the massive amounts of searching we have. Megalith Unformed lets you summon any Megalith out of the deck by tributing exactly double its levels, which makes it pretty easy to get Angel or Full onto the field. Prep searches any level 7 or lower ritual, which includes all your main playmakers, plus Surveyus if you need extra protection. And Manju lets you search any ritual card as does Extra Foolish Burial, since it lets you send Harold to the graveyard. We've also got a couple of bonus targets for Extra Foolish, just in case you want some removal more than a search, or you go up against Dragma. <laughs> Regardless, all that leaves in the main deck is Magician of Black Chaos, Max. This is a level 8 ritual monster, searchable with Manju, Talisman, and Extra Foolish, and when it's summoned, you can tribute one monster to make it so your opponent can't activate monster effects for the rest of the turn. Now, you remember how I said the level 4s can summon any ritual monster? Well, the twins can do that as a quick effect during your opponent's turn, which means if you can end with them on the field along with any other level 4 and Chaos Max in your hand, you can pretty much just end your opponent's turn before it begins and make OTKing them really, really easy. And even if you fail to OTK, you've got so much recycling between your field spell and your trap that it's not too difficult to get this back to your hand and get this back on the field. Of course, since I'm making this deck for a show that has to be entertaining to watch, I didn't focus on the Chaos Max. I thought it would be boring to watch me just repeatedly denying my opponents the ability to play anything. So I just teched this in as something fun to do when I occasionally got amazing hands and no disruption. If you want to take Megalith seriously though, you could probably build around this combo and make it pretty consistent. You can also use the same combo to summon a total field nuke, 
the other Chaos Max, the non-targeting removal birds, and that thing that skips your opponent's main phase, and also shuts down fusion synchros and ixies. You can also pretty easily put some Necrols in here if you want to shut down extra deck monsters. Unicor in particular, really easy to summon in this deck since it's level 4, especially if you got your one of Kaleidoscope, though it's not nearly as useful in the Wild West of EDO Pro. While I'm down here in the side deck, I should mention that most of these are just alternative options to consider. I wouldn't actually side most of these in. Same with Pot of Extravagance, just something to think about since you don't need the extra deck. The Necroz stuff, however, is legit good sideboard cards. You can play one of each, search them with ease, and shut down archetypes that rely on the extra deck. I'd also suggest Danko going against trap-heavy decks, and barrier statues to deal with Nibiru. You don't really normal summon, so it's not too difficult to tech in either of these if you know they're going to be useful. Hell, if you take out the max, you could easily just main deck the barrier statue since all the megaliths are earth, uh, though it's complete luck if you happen to draw it first turn. Uh, finally, there's this, Diviner of Heralds. It's really good in just about any ritual deck, but it's not out in the TCG currently. And unlike Full, this isn't in a main set, it's not coming out anytime soon. We have no idea when it will be legal, so I just didn't want to bother with it. I try to make my decks things that you can actually play if you want to. Uh, regardless, there's the deck. I guess I forgot the extra deck, though. It's not too important. You want to play Dingirsu for sure, since the main deck lacks non-targeting removal. And I'd highly suggest this Neftis thing, since some decks can have trouble dealing with it. Uh, other than that, though, just play whatever you want. A toolbox of rank 4s and 8s, whatever strikes your fancy. Hell, you can even put in some tuners if you want and try to do more synchros. Regardless, there's the video. Like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more strange deck profiles in general. And ring that bell if you want to know right when I release them. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, good luck and have fun.